You've, you've had kind of like half a season in Major League Soccer and with Minnesota yeah. under your belt. What have been your initial impressions of this league? Is it is it what you thought it was going to be? Is it harder? What are some of the challenges? Like, what have you made of this experience yeah, so far? Probably a bit harder than I thought. Uh, yeah, it hasn't been like easy games. So it's quite, uh, quite quite competitive. Uh, all the games, you never know what's going to happen uh, in the game. You can lose some things you expect to win and the same thing uh, opposite way. And uh, I think the atmosphere has been been quite good here. Like uh, I didn't expect so many stadiums to be sold out, and uh, that's a positive thing. You could see see that the soccer, or well, football, <laughs> football for me has has been growing and is growing here all the time. It's a club in flux right now. Have you ever been in a situation um, where things are are so unsettled at this point as you approach the start? of a new season and, and how are you kind of preparing yourself for, for what's to come, especially at the start? Uh, not really, I haven't been in a situation like this, but uh, obviously I hope there will be decisions soon uh, to get the manager and everything sorted out. Cause yeah, it's, it's an important preseason. Like I said, we haven't, didn't do well enough last last year. We need to improve from that. And uh, and yeah, and next week when we start the, start the preseason, the hard work starts and we need to be ready in end of February when the league starts. And there is time, there's, but there's not too much time. So mm -hmm. we, we, we need to, to have everything sorted uh, quite fast. Talk to me about your relationship with, uh, with Robin Lud and how he has kind of helped you assimilate into life in the States and life in, in Major League Soccer. What does it look like when you guys are kind of like off the pitch and, and hanging out? What are you, what are you doing? Nothing too much. We just uh, yeah, we have our kids are same age, so so the kids kids play together and uh, and we enjoy watching them play. <laughs> no, when I came here, obviously Robin had a big part of me me coming here uh, and, and and my first month before my family came, I actually slept in his uh, his guest room <laughs> and uh, now we moved 20 meters from his oh, house so we are we are neighbors too. yeah they had a baby as well so so yeah obviously having him here is a, is a massive thing and and the fact he did not play at all last year uh, when I was here so to have him on the pitch as well I can't wait to, to play with him we have such a good good chemistry on the pitch and uh, yeah I, I, I bet he will give me uh, some assists this mm -hmm. year. I was just gonna say a lot of hopefully produces a lot of assists and a lot of goals for you um, what what are your your personal goals for the season in, in 2024? Yeah, help help the team with my goals I never never set any certain targets I want to score that many goals or, or get that many assists. I just want to score goals to help the team and to, to for the team to reach our target. And, and obviously we need to speak with the team about our targets before, but hopefully I can score many goals. Yeah, you're pretty good at that. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you so much for thank the you. time, Simo. It was really thank nice you. to talk. Well done, Susanna. Come on, Suze. Suze be cooking. Oh, boy. Bro. Uh. I, I, I swear, I swear, Suze didn't prep any of these interviews. Maybe she did, but she doesn't need to prep any of these interviews. Again, it's like, oh, yeah, whoever. She knew everybody at the convention ML, center. MLS Miami is in her Beach. DNA. Yeah, you. I love how your impression of Suze at, at MLS stuff is like, oh, hey, backup goalkeeper, how's your third cousin's niece doing? <laughs> yeah. it's like, you know all these random things about all these players. Me and Timu go go way back. Um, yeah, no. I, so Timu Puki, as I mentioned, scored 10 goals for Minnesota United, which was the most on the team last year. Four in one game. Little, I was just going to say, it's a little deceptive because he did score four goals in one game, and that was against um, a very beat down LA Galaxy side who were abysmal at the end of the season. And it was one of their few wins at home at Allianz Field. The question for for Minnesota United, there are several, too, because this is a team that is completely in flux. Um, scoring goals was an issue for them. Getting wins at home was an issue for them. For their goal scorers, Timu Puki. Bongi Longwane, who had eight on the season, you know, how how confident are you that they can have that same kind of production from these guys? And especially when a lot of that production depends on the engine of the team and Emmanuel Reynoso. And he is just one of these guys. When he's good, he is so very good. He is one of the best number tens in the league. Mm -hmm. But when he's not, when he's not engaged, it's you can get 
two completely different players. And so there's just so many questions on the pitch, not to mention off the pitch. Charlie, what are, you, <laughs> what are your thoughts? I mean, just in that interview, Timu Puki bringing up the manager. They're all waiting for a manager. Uh, mm. So that says enough right there. Minnesota United, you sacked Adrian Heath. Four, I rightfully up, deserved. Four months ago. Four right, months and, ago. And they rightful, had four rightfully months. so. Four months. Because Minnesota have not lived up to the expectations. I, I tell you, when, when I went to Minnesota for the first time, and I see this beautiful stadium, and I see the supporters, and I see the, the team that they have, they were underperforming, and there was no style. So now you, you sack Adrian Heath four months ago. You have a long time to find somebody, and you haven't? So much so to the, to the point where the players are like, we're still waiting. Um, it, but they, they, do have, they do have players. So Reynoso, he only had 16 starts last year. You need, you need at least 30. Mm -hmm. And, and right? to that point, how important is the next manager going to be to get Reynoso into the right mindset? 100%. Because if Reynoso's on, Minnesota's going to be a different team. Yeah. He's, he has so much extraordinary quality, especially for an MLS standard. So given his personal history, how he in Argentina was mixing with, with the wrong crowd maybe at the moment. Um, Let's funny remind enough, people Boca, too, he, he didn't Boca, show up. That's the, he didn't show up last season. That to me is more important than personal issues that For may have existed months. in Argentina. So this is that in, to give context. In like Argentina? He, he didn't join the team until I think right. April or May of, and they, of last year. And they didn't know when he was coming right. or if he was going to show right. up. There was no, right. no one had so any idea. How, how he just showed up on his own. How important is it for the, man, the next manager that comes in to make sure that Bebelo is okay. It has to be. He's your guy. He's yeah. your best player. Your best player. And you said it. They are a different team. I watched Minnesota so many times last year. When Emmanuel Reynoso was on and clicking and engaged, it was spectacular to watch. And you saw it. You, there, were, there were glimpses of that connection between mm -hmm. him and Puki up top. And you got excited about what that could bring and it, it, but it just didn't. It was so inconsistent. It was Sue. so inconsistent across the board. Suze, I would ask you to tell me what what exactly was the style of play that that Adrian Heath was trying to input? Because I watch it, it's so frustrating. It felt so pragmatic and old school. You know, they they rank last in passes, total passes per ninety minutes. I mean, it was just it was so direct. It was stale. It was so stale. And how many strikers? Went there and just completely that's been failed. There. That's yeah, exactly. It's, it's just it's it's a black 100%. hole for strikers, similar to how it's, Chelsea's it's been purgatory. In the past. If you it go to really Minnesota is. United as a striker, if you're a striker in Minnesota, bro, you're done. So, so I look for what this next manager, whoever it is, whether it's Cameron Knowles, uh, shouts to Beyonce's brother for getting the job. That's so awesome. Um, <laughs> whether it's Cameron Knowles or it's <laughs> somebody they hire, who unfortunately now probably won't have much of a preseason, well, if any. They're not going to. They're in preseason right now. They're in. Palm Springs at the Coachella uh, tournament right now, and the new sporting director is Khaled El Ahmad, who they brought over from from Barnsley. He only just arrived in Minnesota because he had to get his visa sorted out. What's, so he what's only just arrived? Just, like, what was the timeline? Are we talking uh, about mid Jan, mid okay. January. So he hasn't even really been able been able to see much of the team, and he is the man that is going to be appointing the new the new manager. And so I feel for a guy like Cam Knowles because. You're, you're basically a sitting duck. You know yeah. that this guy is going to come in and, and pick his own, his own staff, his own guy, and he doesn't have a lot of time to even watch the players and see what he's working with. And so it just it feels like this is such a rebuild for, for Minnesota. And it, from scratch. But they have good from pieces. Scratch. That's what I'm and saying. And they have good pieces. Puki, Reynoso, Hassani yeah. Dotson, Dane St. Clair, Robin Lud. Dane St. Clair's great. You have some good pieces. And I, I guess to, to your point, if you bring a new sporting director, I guess that's why you don't rush to, to, to hire a coach. You, you got to wait for the sporting director to bring in the person. It. And for, for Cam Knowles, this is your opportunity. You look, Troy Lesane, same yeah. thing. You weren't expected to be a head coach, but you got the job. Yeah. So make the most of it. Make maybe you surprise so down the road. You get another opportunity. And maybe the guys will play for, for – so Cam Knowles was the, the manager of the, the second team, Minnesota's right. second mm -hmm. team. Um, so he's been in and around. They know, they know him well. And it could be a case where, maybe, you know, the players play for him. Um, but it's a tough, it's a tough situation to, to be in for, for all good, parties involved. Just, I hope he doesn't play it safe. Get in there and try to cook a little bit.
cook. Yeah, come on, do yeah. something fun. <laughs> the fans deserve it. Such a great fan base. They sing Wonderwall. It's a great stadium. It is. It. Is. I mean, something. Allianz Field is spectacular.